Hello and welcome to Let's Play Casper with me, Hasdi. Last time we finished the game. This episode we're going to be covering some of the areas you can unlock through cheats. And I'm going to cover some areas I either didn't explain too well or I missed during the playthrough. And then I'm going to finish with a sort of my opinion style review of this game since I missed that out during the credits. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the cheat, which unlocks new areas. So if I come up here, you can go into any room and use this cheat. It's just I'm coming up here for convenience sake, since it's right here. And what you want to do is go to the top left of any room, press up and left at the same time, L1 and R1, and then press start, and you'll notice it'll freeze the game. Then you want to press down and right, R1 and L1, and then it will unfreeze the game. And now, if you go up to any wall, or just anywhere in general, hold R1, you'll float up and over the wall. And if you do that here, and come down into this area, you'll see this area. Full of everything you possibly will ever need, other than the door keys, which are coloured. Like the green, blue, and purple, and whatever else. Every item, other than them, to, that you need to complete the game. So, we've got every morph form. A ton of food, some weights, keys, all the boss items. So, yeah. If you can't be bothered to play through most of the game, you can come here and grab these. So, that's pretty cool that they added that. It's a nice touch. I like that. And then if you float back down here, you can go back down to the other area. But, hold on, let me just show you some things. Like, you can float around. <laughs> As you can see here, there's a picture on the wrong side of the wall. Um, I didn't notice that during the game, play game, and I have only just noticed that now. That's quite weird. And there's another one. I never actually noticed that they do that. That's really weird. Anyway, down here, I don't know if I ever showed this, but that's a cupboard. I think I might have shown that, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, next, I'm going to show you some of the things that I uh, didn't really explain too well. One of which is that puzzle up in the attic, so... If I just float over this door and go in here, and then down into here, I'm going to go to the secret room we covered in the 10th episode, I think, and explain that puzzle since since then I have managed to figure out, well I didn't figure out, I found out um, the solution to this, how it works. So if I go in here, press X to move this out of the way again. Change back, Casper. Yes, you can! Change back! Fine, I'll float. Ah, get over here. Change back. And then... That's normally where smoke form is. There's smoke form. We're going to go in there. Get down. In we go. I found a hidden bonus. Here we are. Broccoli again. Bananas, whatever else, I'm not picking everything up again, so anyway. Here's that puzzle that I was talking about, this one that I didn't know the solution to when I came to record it, but I do now. And I was right that these gold pieces are part of the puzzle. Basically, the way you solve this puzzle is take these numbers and convert it into binary. So, 52 is actually 110100 in binary. 2 is one. 0 and 10 is 1010. You're probably asking yourself, that's not the solution at all. How is that the solution? And the answer to that is that you have to then use those numbers and then you've got to remove one of the zeros from the end of each number. So now it's 11010 and then the next line is just 1. Then the line under that is 101. But still, if you go over here, and put that in, you'll get one, one, zero, lag, one, zero, <laughs> lag again, and then down here you'll have one, zero, one, which is the solution to those two lines, but not this one. So what do you do with that line? Basically, then you have to add two zeros to the beginning of it. I don't know how you meant to know that. And press it there, and that's the solution. Um, as a kid, I'm pretty sure I would never have figured that out or figured out that you're meant to remove zeros and then add more zeros. 
It just seems highly ridiculous. And how anyone worked that out, they must be a genius. So, but anyway, that's that solution. Going to move on to another thing, which I managed to miss twice in <laughs> twice during the playthrough, which was a suit of armor which unlocked a vent. Um, I managed to miss this suit of armor twice in the playthrough by going in there once to show a glitch and then because I was so shocked that I couldn't do it I completely forgot about it and then the second time I um, wasn't quite sure how to unlock something in that room when I went there and I got it wrong and then I was just forgot about it a second time so yeah um, so I'm going to show you that but first I need a green key I believe if I go through here and through this vent I think yep there we go green key and come back down here. Go up here. Again, me and my directions. Just as awful as ever. Lock this with green key. It's kind of annoying they didn't give you the green keys when I went in that bonus room. Since you're still going to have to do a lot of the puzzles to uh, get through these areas. Unlike that, you can just float over it. And then... Smoke form. Through this vent. And da, 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 uh, red key, haha! -ha, screw you, red door. And then come in here. <laughs> Never mind the buzz saw. And then this is the room. This suit of armor. I managed to miss this single suit of armor twice, which is ridiculous. So I'm just going to show you this smoke form through the vent. Gives you a switch, some gold, some sandwich. That basically just moves the suit of armor again, because it goes across the door, and then that switch moves it back. Yeah, that's all I wanted to show there. It's just that I've missed that twice, and it just seems a little ridiculous, so I decided I'll show it. And, oh my god, I've, flo <laughs> I've gone out the world. Anyway, now that I've shown those two things, I'm going to give my sort of opinion review of this game. So, I'll just probably float over some of the areas, just show some stuff off while I do this, so let's get to it. Um, yeah, basically, this game, I thought that the gameplay was, even though it was really simple, it was just lots of switch puzzles, and it got a bit repetitive, it was actually really fun, and I enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. Um, music and graphics are pretty good for a PS1, and to be honest, they didn't need to be any better than what they are, because for a PS1 game, you know, don't need anything better than this to be honest it served its purpose and it just works the length of the game it's about four hours without a guide so you know it's not a long game but again it doesn't really need to be much longer than that because you know to be honest if it was longer the switch puzzles would get repetitive the gameplay will get repetitive it would just get boring after a while so to be honest, I think that's about the right length, so that's alright. Um, what else? Um, oh yeah, and even though this is a licensed game, so it was a game based on like a cartoon or film or something, it's still pretty good for a licensed game, mainly because it doesn't rely on the storyline of the main show so much, more that it's got its kind of own storyline to follow. So that's pretty good, and to be honest, it's pretty good for a PS1 game in general, so I'd give it probably about 7 out of 10 for a PS1 game. But, you know, compared to some of the other games that were out at the time, you know, Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, you know, compared to those games, this one did lack quite a bit. But for a licensed game, it's pretty good, I will say. I've probably said it's pretty good several times, so you can probably tell how good it truly is. So, yeah, I think... That's all I have to say on this. Um, so, what's next? Um, sorry, the random jump cut there got distracted. Um, what am I going to talk about? I was going to talk about my next LP. I'm probably going to get round to that some point during the year. I've kind of made it my New Year's resolution just to try and get through one of these games without it taking six months, so like this one did. So, yeah, that's going to hopefully come eventually. It's again, it's a PS1 game. And again, it is a licensed game that I thought was really good, so... Um, yep, 
so you can look forward to that if you like my videos so um, yeah until next time like comment subscribe all the other good stuff Hello and welcome back again for a second time in this episode, probably wondering what's going on now. What's going on now is that I've managed to record the whole of episode 7's commentary twice and forgotten that I did. Therefore I've got a load of content which I never used and wish I did since it's a lot of empty space filler which can be kind of funny. But I never used it so uh, here we go, here it is. Buzz all more form. Let's bust through the doors, friendly ghost style. Well, it's not a door, it's wood. Again, it's wood, not a door. But then again, doors can be wood. But it's not a door, it's wood. Ah, that's, <laughs> ah, that's too confusing. It's not a door, it's wood, but door is wood, but it's not door. Yeah, you figure that out. Anyway, button. Ah, uh, the backtracking. <laughs> from the way I complain about it, it's like I have a disease that <laughs> prevents me from doing backtracking. It's like, ah, oh, backtracking, no! It's like, it's like my sort of weakness, like a vampire's weak to sunlight. Ah, oh, backtracking, no! It burns, ah! Oh. What can I talk about? Oh, I know what I can talk about. Um, a mechanic. In the game, you saw that, or you may have noticed, that the items that you use in the boss fights, they just completely disappear when you use them. So, earlier, when we borrowed Cat's perfume and Dr. Harvey's camera, um, and he said, yeah, we're definitely going to return them. We can't return them, because apparently using them once has completely destroyed them. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, not so friendly now, are we? Um, apparently Casper does not understand the meaning of borrow. I've been Hasdee, this has been Let's Play Casper, so hang on for next time and I'll see you in a few months.